Scott Hall is the Executive Vice President of Swapolice.com. His company specializes in arranging for car owners to either get into or out of leases. And we want to talk to him today about the implications of leasing an electric car. So, Scott, welcome to EV World. Thank you very much for having me, Bill. Well, it's great to have you. <clears throat> well, first of all, let's start by, by helping people understand how does one go about swapping a lease on an automobile? Well, let, let me start with this. Uh, what Swap a Lease is, is an online marketplace where people can come to get in or out of automotive leases. Yep. And the reason I bring that up is uh, the swapping is a little bit of a misnomer. If you need to come to us simply to get out, that's not a problem. And if you, of course, want to get into a short-term lease, uh, that's perfectly fine too. But uh, by no means does anybody need to swap to actually use the SwapAlease.com service. Okay. So, I mean, we'll explain that a little bit more then. Uh, who, who would be your typical client here? Well, really, the people we divided into two, the, the two sides of the equation. Of course, the side that wants to get out and the side that wants to get in. Okay. Uh, the folks that want to get out of their lease really come to us and really basically fit into two different buckets, if you will. Uh, the first bucket is the financial. And what I mean by that is perhaps somebody's run into some financial difficulty. Uh, they've lost their job. They've been downsized, uh, taken on additional expenses, whatever the case may be and they need to get into a less expensive payment of some sort on their lease. Okay. So they come to us, we would help them get out, and that would, of course, free them up to go get into something that uh, fits their budget better. Right. So they would go, for example, from something like they were really doing well, they were releasing a BMW 3 Series, and now they decide they need to get into a, a you know, Chevrolet Cobalt, for example. That, that's a great example right there, and, and again, that could uh, stem from different reasons, but definitely uh, financial motivation would be behind that. Okay. Now, the second large bucket that we see is what we consider to be lifestyle changes, and let me give you a quick example of that to illustrate. Uh, we often come across young couples that have uh, what I'll call an exciting car, like a Corvette or something <laughs> like that, Right. and all of a sudden they find out that they've got a new family member on the way. Right. That car isn't going to work for them anymore, and they're going to need to get into something a little bit more practical, and dare I say it, like the, the minivan word. Yep. But uh, it could be another good example is we're located in Cincinnati, Ohio, the home of Procter & Gamble, and it's very common for Procter & Gamble executives to get a hold of us uh, because they're, they live in Cincinnati presently where you do need a car to get around, and they're going to be moving to either overseas or to a large market like New York, where that car uh, isn't only necessary, but it's quite an additional expense. Right, yep. Yeah. Okay. So then the people looking to get into leases, uh, that would be the other side of the equation here. What typically does their uh, demographic look like? Sure. Uh, well, on the other side of the equation, we consider that to be the lease buyer as opposed to the lease seller. And th those folks come to us for all sorts of different reasons uh, from all different demographics. But the things that they have in common is they are looking for an attractive economical deal on a particular vehicle, and they also like the short-term nature of taking over a lease. Uh, as everybody generally knows, a lease is short-term in nature in comparison to more traditional financing anyway, and using a service like Swap a Lease to transfer a lease, that even uh, shortens that cycle even more. But uh, we see a lot of people that come to us take over a lease for 12 to 18 months and come back and get something different. And their only motivation, frankly, is they just like to switch cars and drive something new more often. Okay. And so what, so, advantages. Yeah, so what are sort of the mechanics of this? Let's say that I'm, I'm leasing a, uh, you know, that Series 3 BMW, for example, mm -hmm. um, and I've, I've been downsized, which I've had happen before. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, and so... Um, what typically am I going to do then? I'm going to come on the website. Uh, I mean, kind of walk me through what happens uh, in, in the process here. Well, let me give you kind of the, uh, the A and B steps, if you will. Uh, if you wanted to get out of your vehicle or use SwapAlease.com as a lease seller, what you would do, you would log on to the SwapAlease.com service and create a listing, which can be done online, okay. and we do have a full call center staff as well that can assist you doing that over the phone. Okay. But we would need, very much like if you're going to eBay to sell something, we would create an attractive listing for you that has all the important metrics about your lease. Okay. And those really break down to three factors. 
information about the car itself, information about the lease terms, and a little bit of personal information, in other words, where you live, your phone number, et cetera, so people can contact you. All right. Now, once your vehicle is listed, uh, to actually transfer your lease, uh, that's a three-step process, very easy as well. The first step would be finding a buyer uh, and reaching an agreement. We call that the virtual handshake because that's often done over email or, or the telephone as opposed to somebody driving across town and actually physically shaking hands. Right. But once that agreement's made, we then move on to getting the leasing company involved because everything Swap the Lease does follows the guidelines, procedures, and policies of the leasing company. We want them to be involved and make sure that they're aware of what's going on. And that protects not only the person getting out of the lease, but also the person getting into the right. And the, the first step with the leasing company is to do a credit check to make sure that the person taking over that lease or the lease buyer is credit worthy to do so. All right. Now, assuming they are, it moves on to stage three, which is the final stage, and that's the paperwork stage or documentation stage, where essentially the original leasee signs the lease over to the new leasee, and the new leasee basically takes, uh, takes over that lease officially from a paperwork and documentation standpoint, making it official in the eyes of the leasing company. Right. Okay. So, you know, I, I went through the website and I found, for example, 30 Chevrolet Volts, 13 Nissan Leafs and eight uh, Toyota plug-in Priuses. These are vehicles I would define as electric vehicles or strongly electric drive vehicles. You've got quite a few, look like uh, a couple hundred at least Toyota, conventional Toyota Priuses, C models and V models and things like that on, on the website. Um, so so in, in the case of those, those particular vehicles, I noticed that uh, I, I picked, for example, I picked one, it was a conventional Prius, uh, located down in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, the miles per month on it were 1,186. Uh, it said the swap was pending. Uh, this was a 30-month lease, and the monthly payment was $218. So let's say I, for example, I'm in Omaha, Nebraska, and okay. I decide, oh, that's fairly close to me. Tulsa's a few hundred miles away. Um, that's certainly a lease I could afford. What's the process of me wanting, for example, then to to assume that lease from that that individual, and how do I get that car here? Well, uh, let me answer several questions there. Let me address them all. Right. Uh, when you're going through the search process on swap a lease, once you find a vehicle that you, that possibly meets uh, meets what you're trying to do and meets the needs uh, that you'll have for an automobile. Uh, it would then be necessary to contact the seller of that lease, which can all be done through the swap lease system uh, via not only the website, but uh, through email addresses and, and, and mobile phones as well. Uh, we've got a whole system on, on our website to accommodate that. Okay. Uh, in this particular instance, I do want to point out something. The swap pending means somebody has essentially beat you to it in this right. case. Right. Uh, yeah, well, I, I, I assumed that, but I just wanted to make sure I was clear on it. So. No, you're absolutely right, and that means they're probably going through the credit check process at, at this point. But uh, uh, I think you bring up a great point, Bill, is it is not uncommon for lease transfers to take place uh, several states apart, even cross-country, and we've also made... Uh, uh, arrangements on our website to help users with that as well. Uh, what I mean by that, we've partnered with a transportation company uh, that can get that vehicle anywhere it needs to get to. Uh, we have a third-party inspection company uh, that can go give you a full third-party appraisal of that vehicle essentially anywhere in the United States uh, within a couple of business days to really give you peace of mind to, hey, I want to make sure that this car is in good condition because once that person takes over that lease, it's now your problem if there is a problem with that car. So right. you want to you want to make sure that everything is squared away up front. Uh, additionally, too, and I think this kind of differentiates us from your standard auto traders and cars.com, most of the vehicles that we do we deal with, in fact, probably 99%, if not higher, are only a couple of years old. And in most cases, uh, those vehicles are going to be under full factory warranty. And uh, some good photographs in many cases will say, hey, this car is in pretty good condition. And even right. if there are a few mechanical issues with it, it's not going to be too big a deal because I'm under factory warranty. Right, yeah. Because most of the warranties are, I noticed that, I looked to me like most of the cars were, at least within the, obviously the Volts and the Priuses and the Nissan Leafs were all in the 2013, 2012 uh, 12 time frame. Okay, well, let's, let's, let's talk about elect leasing an electric car, which was sort of, 
the thing that stimulated this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, you make mention uh, there that there are a number of reasons why you think it's smart rather than buying an electric car to actually lease an electric car. You want to sort of explain those to us? Uh, absolutely. The, the primary reason, in my opinion, is, and I'm, I'm very much an advocate of the electric vehicles. In fact, Swap Release has a couple of leases on bolts right now for company cars, and we've had a lot of success with them. But uh, as you well know, the technology is going to be changing rapidly moving forward in terms of how uh, the electric vehicles are, pardon me, electric vehicles or vehicles are operated and what have you. So we believe leasing is the way to go for a couple of different reasons. Number one, leasing, of course, is going to decrease the cycle that one has a vehicle. And we're estimating in the very near future, we're going to see uh, tremendous growth in battery range and what have you and the efficiency of these vehicles. And by leasing, you're going to be able to take advantage of that new technology sooner. On the other side of the equation, if there ends up being some problems with the current technology, you simply give the vehicle back at the end of the lease, and it's not going to be your wallet or your pocketbook that's going to take the hit on the used car market. Right. Well, so so this brings up the issue then that I see not only you know that you've brought up, but but uh, in following, for example, uh, you know leasing uh, corporate vehicles in the UK, for example, they have brought this up. Uh, and, that, and that's this whole issue of the depreciation factor on these vehicles. Um, they're, they're saying that some of these vehicles are going to be, um, you know, within five years, something like anywhere between a high of maybe 30% and a low of being only worth about 20% of what they were new. Um, how, does that, how does that sort of tie into this? Well, uh, regardless if it's an electric vehicle lease or any type of a lease, the greater the depreciation factor involved will equate to higher monthly payments. So yeah. ideally in a lease, you want to have a, a low sales price and a high residual value, and that's going to be best for the consumer in terms of monthly payment. Right. In my opinion, uh, the verdict is still out on the electric vehicles in terms of what they'll actually do as we move forward, uh, because the residual value, frankly, is an estimate or, a, or an educated guess, if you will, right. of what car will be worth uh, two, three, four years down the road, depending on the term of the lease. And we're right on the verge where we're going to be seeing some of those vehicles come back into the market. So I think it's, it's a little bit premature to tell. Um, but uh, again, from my, my direct experience with the Chevy Volts in particular, um, I don't think there'll be any significant matters to worry about. And I think there'll also be some market factors depending on when those leases are coming up. Uh, as you well know, uh, gas prices change people's minds pretty quick in terms of what vehicles <laughs> they claim they're looking for. Right, yeah. And, you know, who knows what other geopolitical events may be involved at that time as well. Yeah, we spelled that uh, Ukraine, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> at the moment, you know, a few months ago it was Syria. Now this, this month, the... the is your uh, you know world cry crisis is uh, is the Ukraine so uh, I think there's also a couple other other factors is uh, and it's not probably going to be much of an issue on when these uh, original bolts are coming off lease because there haven't been any tremendous technology upgrades quite yet but as we move forward uh, if a leased vehicle uh, is we'll call it generation one technology for lack of a better term and all of a sudden generation two or three technology is available when that vehicle comes off lease that could have a tremendous uh, uh, effect on those reasons or pardon me those used car values at that time as well right now so so the, uh, it's not when you're leasing a vehicle all you're doing in, in, in essence is a long-term rent or hire of that vehicle um, you're, you're, you're helping the company that actually bought the vehicle, and this could be a subsidiary of the auto manufacturer, or this could be, in fact, a third party, that that's their business. They buy these vehicles, they lease them to people, they bring them back, and then they do something with them. They, you know, send them through Mannheim auctions or whatever ends up happening to them. Um, so, so the financial burden of of the of all of this in essence partially falls on the on the person with the lease but a lot of the weight of that then falls i see falling on the leasing company is that true